Many people will talk about New Orleans as being the cradle of American jazz. But they will also talk about Richmond, Indiana, being the cradle of recorded American jazz because of the Jeanette Studios. So they have the Star Piano Company is in Richmond, Indiana, and with the advent of the recording industry, uh, they opted to make um, furniture for phonographs and to store phonograph equipment. And they thought, well, why don't we just get into the into the business of recording our own records? So it it progressed from making pianos and making furniture for phonograph components to why don't we just go ahead and jump in there and start recording our own records. So they start this studio and they start bringing musicians in from Chicago and all over the place and recording all kinds of music, not, not just jazz, of course. And as the story goes, the recording studio was set up in this building that was next to a railroad track. A shed, quite literally a shed right on the railroad tracks that they outfitted with this recording equipment. So they had to be careful about what the train schedule was to make sure that they weren't trying to record music when the train went by. Uh, even though it's called the Star Piano Company, it was two brothers with the last name of Jeanette who were employees of the Star Piano Company. And so that's why we call it Jeanette Records because it was the, the name of the employees of the Star Piano Company who decided to start uh, to start the recording aspect of, of, uh, of their company, their corporation. And then they opened it up to almost everybody and a range of musicians. This was a business. The Jeanettes were in it to make money. They, underst they understood that this was a new burgeoning uh, technology and it was creating something that people wanted to buy. And so they, were, they, they didn't care who they recorded. But I just find it interesting that uh, with all of these Southern jazz musicians, black and white, but certainly the uh, uh, black jazz musicians from the South who were unable to record in Chicago, they made the trek by train and by car to Richmond, Indiana to record. And if it weren't for these visionary brothers um, from the Star Piano Company who wanted to record this music and sought out these musicians specifically to record and market their music, we would not have any of these recordings. We wouldn't know what this music sounded like with any kind of authenticity. So the vision and really even the, the risk that Jeanette took to record these musicians, um, it, it's really noteworthy. The first jazz recordings that were made in Jeanette was 1923, so exactly 100 years ago from when we decided to do this Jeanette Records project. So that's when jazz was starting to be recorded there. Now jazz had been recorded before at some other companies, but um, the very first jazz r records were 1917, 1919 in that area, but they weren't really being mass produced. And there were some record companies who weren't interested in recording jazz. In fact, that's why a lot of the musicians who had resettled in Chicago from the South, specifically New Orleans, why they didn't record in Chicago because the, the, um, uh, the recording companies in Chicago at the time weren't interested in recording them. They just didn't have anywhere to go. So it was Jeanette Records, which was really the first recording studio that sought out these jazz musicians. Indiana at that time was not necessarily the most favorable environment for minorities in the United States. There, there was a, a, a huge um, clan presence in the state. And so not only did the musicians themselves take some risk coming into Indi Indiana to record, but the Jeanettes themselves and the Star Piano Company understood that they were putting themselves at risk if they were looked on with disfavor by some of the, the elements that were in the area at that time. So um, I think that, it, that there was no small amount of, of admiration that we need to provide for the Star Piano Company and Jeanette Records for, for doing this. These early jazz recordings were phenomenally influential among young jazz musicians. This was uh, the only music that they could get um, on record. Of course, you could go hear them live, but like in the case of Bix Beiderbecke, who of course is a part of the Jeanette story, uh, he was so young, and a lot of these musicians were so young that they weren't able to necessarily follow these bands around and, and hear them. There were um, communities of, of people who were calling jazz the devil's music and, 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 and saying that jazz was going to be 
bringing down American culture and, and um, disintegrating the American family and destroying the American youth. You know, they said it about rock and roll when Elvis Presley came on the scene in the 50s, and they said it about, you know, uh, rap and hip hop when it starts developing, you know, in the late 80s. Uh, but I think that these early recordings were among the first that kind of started that fear of, of what music can do. You know, it shows the power of, of, of music. It's pretty, pretty cool.